Ahlan Usra Shenu Kawan El Wa La Welcome family. What was the first language? We're gonna get straight into it because this is a detailed video, so I need your undivided attention. Kala Akazi. Let's get it. Okay, so before we get into this, I need y'all to know what um the difference between a language script and a language. Most of y'all know, but I'm going to go over it anyway. So a language script is actually what you write. So the script is what you write. And different tones have different scripts, as you know. And the language is the actual sounds that you produce out of your mouth. So let's, let's keep traveling. Okay, now this graph is what cuneiform looks like. This is the first language right here. I created this from the book uh, First Language by Malachi Z. York. He gave, you, he gave us the key to the cuneiform language with the tone. Now, this is just some of the tones, but this is what cuneiform, the first language, looks like. So let's keep going. And cuneiform came from the trees, y'all. <laughs> It literally came from the trees. Let's read this so you can know what I'm talking about. Okay, the reading of the Akasha records beneath the Asa Atej tree is symbolic of the tree alphabets, also called the Tree of Toth, which reveals the mysteries. It was recorded in a form of cuneiform called Atez in Adamic and Asa in Ashurik City, meaning an upright stick, staff, cane. Because the script, pay attention, y'all, the script was based on vertical and horizontal wedges as the branches of a tree. Cuneiform came from the actual trees, like, because the wedges in cuneiform look like the horizontal and vertical wedges of a tree, tree branch. So, just want y'all to get that in your head. Let's keep going. Y'all can read the rest of that. Pause the video. Read the rest of that. So you can get it firm in your mind. But cuneiform came from nature, y'all. <laughs> nature. And this is from El's Holy Torah by Malachi Z. York. I'm just putting all this together. Like I'm getting bits and pieces from every book that I need and putting it together so you can know what the what this first language came from. Let's keep going. This is now cuneiform just isn't all the same. Cause as you know, as we uh went through time, the language changed. Because it was different tones. So on the left, this is what uh, Adam wrote. Adam or Zakar, more put correctly. Um, these are different forms of cuneiform. If you pay attention closely, these symbols, they look the same because they wedge shape, but they different. You know, some of them are crossed over. Some of them are slanted as the ones on the right with the rock on the right. Like some of the uh, wedge shapes are slanted. So what I'm trying to say is cuneiform, it had different forms. It it uh, morphed over time. So keep that in your mind. And this is more cuneiform to show you how it morphed. It's, these are different time periods. So different forms of cuneiform. This is another different form. Just pause the video and look closely because you will see like it's not real. It looked the same. It is the same, essentially. But I'm trying to show you the small, detailed uh, morphisms like because it changed over time. And this is what was used to write cuneiform, the first language. So, yep. All right. I told you the first language right off the bat because I'm showing you how the language changed over time. So I'm giving you the first language and then I'm getting to down to today. So stay with me. So on the left, we have Nikeba. She spoke cuneiform. Hold on. Let me backtrack. The elder spoke cuneiform at the top, then gave it down. Talk, they taught Nikeba cuneiform. And um, Nikeba's mate, Zakar, he spoke Ugadit, which is cuneiform in Hindi. So pay attention. This is the first time cuneiform, the purest first language, became morphed. It changed. So it got combined with Hindi, cuneiform and Hindi, which gave you Ugarit. Okay. 
And then we have the Adamites. It passed down Nikabah and Zakar's children. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nikabah and Zakar's children. It passed down and they started speaking Adamic. So we got Adamic and Sidic, which came from Cuneiform and Ugaric. Okay. And then we get all these other languages. Uh, Syriac, Arabic, Amharic, Coptic, Egeese, Farsi, Greek. Um, we got Aramic, Chaldean, Hebrew, Phoenician, Nubic, Hindu, Akkadian, Ugarit, Urdu, Latin, English. And it's all came from the same, they, they in order, you know, of, uh, they in order of time periods and how they descended from each other. So just study that graph that came from the first language book. All right, let's keep going. Now, this is uh, Sanskrit, Hindi, what um, Zakar uh, spoke. He spoke uh, cuneiform and Hindi. And this is just an example of Hindi. His parents spoke Hindi too. So this is uh, Sanskrit, which is, you know, Hindi. It's not modern Hindi, but it's, you know, Sanskrit because Sanskrit was spoken. So this is an uh, example. And this is how it was pronounced back then. You know, uh, so y'all go through this and I'm trying to show y'all the tones and how they morph throughout time. OK, so we got we had pay attention. We had cuneiform and then we had Hindi. So those are the first languages. They got mixed. OK, so I'm going to read this to y'all. The Torah contains 613 commandments of which most people only know about 10. It was originally written in the ancient Arab Aramaic. Not the modern Hebrew language by Tammuz and his 46 helpers to bring it from the Enuma Elish and water it down to Aramic and Sidiac for the Enosites from Cuneiform. The ancient Hebrew script is Phoenician or Babylonian. Phoenician, Babylonian, the same thing, y'all. Pay attention. The tone, the tongue. Is the same. However, the language is adapted from ancient writings. The Ashuric city, the Ashuric language is also Babylonian. Okay, so this is the first time it got watered down. So cuneiform went from pure cuneiform, uh, and who got it? What Adam spoke to ancient Hebrew script or ancient Aramic. This is the father of all modern languages, ancient Aramic. And it was created because the mortals back then, they didn't, they, they digressed. They didn't know how to speak cuneiform no more. It was going to be too difficult. So a new script had to be created for them. So in time, it went from ancient Hebrew script or Aramic script to Ashuric script. And Ashuric came from um, ancient Aramaic. So... Let's keep going. And Phoenician, this is, I, I put the Phoenician script right here. If you pay close attention, it's really the same. It's the same as ancient Aramaic. Phoenician, Babylonian, um, the different names just denotes the different people of the different areas, but they spoke the same tongue and the same script, but it gradually changed over time with people being in so many different areas. So... Y'all stay with me because we're getting somewhere. Now, this is just another uh, diagram. I think this is out the Torah uh, of ancient Aramic. And it shows rabbinic uh, Hebrew. Let's keep going. Now, this we get into the modern Hebrew on the top. This is modern Hebrew on the top. <clears throat> and this is um, modern Arabic on the bottom. You know, everybody is familiar with this. So now this is to show you this diagram is to show you that uh, Arabic and uh, Hebrew is the same. So you got words such as peace, salam, shalom, da Dawood, Dawid, Abu, Ab, Hajj, Haggai, Had, Yad, Yod, Adam, Adam, Wahi, Wahi, Walid, Walad. See, it's the same, you know? It ain't no coincidence those words are that close. And these are just different forms. This to show, this right here is to show you that um, 
these are different forms of Arabic and how it changed throughout time. So look at all these scripts and how they changed throughout time. Like all these scripts are so, are so different because like I said, they everybody started dispersing out and moving. So they changed. The script and the tongue changed. So now, now we getting into the modern languages. How all this now keep in mind this all came from cuneiform. Then it went from cuneiform and Hindi, then to Aramic, then to Ashuric, and now we getting down to the the modern languages. So we getting somewhere, y'all. Just stick with me, okay? We got modern Hindi. Now, if you go back and look, this this is different from the original Sanskrit, these tones, you know? So this is to show you how all the tones change. Now, I'm going to keep going, but y'all just, just pause it if you need to, because I don't want it to be too long. So this is Bengali, and obviously this is from Hindi. Look at the symbols. It's just different tones. Remember that. Okay, that's Ge'ez, if, uh, Ethiopic alphabet. And uh, Ge'ez came from... Arabic. It just descended from Arabic. And uh, you got Amharic, Amharic, which come from Ge'ez. So let's keep going. Uh, this is Indonesian. Now look how at Indonesian, you, if you don't pay close attention, you would think this is Arabic. But no, this is not Arabic. This is Indonesian. Look at the tones. The uh, highlighted ones are the different tones. So they just use Arabic script, you know, but it's different tones. All right, let's keep going. Now, Throughout time, everybody, most languages used to use Arabic script. Uh, but now most languages then digress to using Latin script, sadly. So this is to show you how the tones are still there, but they're using a different script. So keep in mind, the script and the tones change throughout time. So Indonesian, they're using Latin script now. Then we got Urdu. Remember, Urdu was what Zakar spoke. Or no, he spoke Ugarit. It, it's it's similar though, but excuse me, he spoke Ugarit. But Urdu used to uh, their script used to be cuneiform. Then they went down to Arabic, and now I think they're using Latin. But this is just a diagram showing you that this is um, they using an Arabic script, but the tones are the tones are different, you know. And those numbers right there at the bottom, those are Hindi, so. You know, a little bit of Hindu got mixed in right here. This is Swahili. Uh, now, look at all these tones. And Swahili used to use the Arabic script, too. Now, they use Latin. So, you got tones such as Mbawe, Mbwe, Ndawa, Ndawe. You got Chiwe, Pue, Pui, Po, Swa, Swe, Rodu, Gage, Gi. You get it. So, just pause if you need to. Uh, study this. Now we got Chinese, and this is to show you how uh, Chinese was simple at first. They use Chinese came from uh, the hieroglyphics, the you know the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Now you see how they use the symbols on the far left, and then it gradually morphed into what we see today, which is those Asian symbols. So keep in mind, everything was simple at first, simple tones, simple everything. It just now it got so complex. So this is just to show you how everything is, you know, everything digressed and evoluted because we're getting somewhere. Just keep, hey, just stay, stay, stay tuned. Now, this is Greek and Latin. This is what I'm speaking right now and what most of us speak. So this is Greek and Latin script and tones. So you got alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, Iota Kappa, you get it. So just pause it if you still need to study. I don't want this video to be too long. Um, so yeah, this is the this is where all the modern European languages stem from. And Greek stem from uh Ashuric or Arabic. Uh it's a script. It's a script, it was a certain script. I forget the name, but it was a script of Arabic, and uh that's where Greek stemmed from ancient Greek. Now this right here is like modern Greek. But it's just to show you where all the European languages stem from. All right, let's keep going. Now this is Russian. <laughs> you got a, be, ve, ge, de, ye, uh, yo, je, 
ze e e krota koye ka ed eh en yeah you get it so that's russian so keep in mind that look like latin symbols so showing you how it morph you got french a b c d e f g h i j k l got the french alphabet and you got the Portuguese, Portuguese. Um, you got the Portuguese alphabet. And look at the Y. Look at the Y, y'all. Uh, you got epsilon. That's a Greek letter. You got double, double, double V. Those are Greek letters. That's to show you how all this is the same. All languages are the same. It's just it 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 morphed throughout time. So you can really learn. You know, you can really learn all languages, like every single language. This is simple. This is how this is what Malachi York was trying to tell us, y'all. That this is simple, like, cause everything is one. Everything is the same. It just you gotta pay attention to the details on how everything changed throughout time. But it's all one. Cause keep in mind, everything came from cuneiform. Just keep this, keep this video in your mind as we, you know, go along. So we got Portuguese. All right. We got the Spanish. Everybody knows Spanish. You got A, B, C, C, D, E, F, A, H, 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 K, L, E, Y. You get it? <clears throat> Spanish. You got German. German. Um, now, I'm going to tell you a, bit, a little bit about German. German used to use a script called the runic script. Look up the runic script. R-U-N-I-C. The runic script. Uh, that's a script. If you look at that script, it looked just like the ancient... Um, Etymaic script. So that's how you know all these languages originally come from Etymaic, which came from cuneiform. So it's all the same. Just pay attention, you know. You will see. It's all here. So German alphabet. And y'all really look at those tones. Pause the uh video and look at those tones so you can really see. Cause I put these tones here so you can the proof in what I'm saying. Cause I could have just made a video. Without putting these photos here, but these photos are proof in what I'm saying. Uh, I, this is English, yeah. This is the English what I'm speaking now, and what we most of us speak over here in uh, North America. Uh, yeah. So we got through all of that. We went through cuneiform on down to all those languages to English, y'all. Now these are the languages created by Malachi Z York. So this is what I really wanted to sh I really wanted to push this point right here. Now, if you made it this far, you deserve to hear this. Um all the all the good stuff come it don't it don't come in the beginning, it come in the uh towards the middle and the end. So but the point I'm trying to stress is that Nuwabic, the languages Malachi Z York brought, are ascended languages. There are ascended languages. They are actual languages. Keep in mind, everything else, everything else in the world, German, German, English, Spanish, Latin, Greek, uh, modern Hebrew, uh, Aramaic, ancient Aramaic, all those are dialects. They're not languages. They're dialects because they just digressed from other languages. But this, these languages right here. The language is Malachi York, and we're gonna I'm gonna get detailed in in a minute. Let me just stress, stress this point. Um, these are ascended languages. These are actual languages. They're the best languages on earth. That that statement is proven within the pudding. <laughs> these are our ascended languages, y'all. There's no other languages on earth like these languages. They don't come from anywhere. They are stemmed from. Our ancient languages, but made pure. You feel me? So, let's keep going. Uh, on the left, we got Nubic. He 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 brought the language Nubic, which came from ancient Aramaic and Sidiac. It was based off a of style, based off how we used to speak. It's a book called the Nubic language. You know, this is good for people coming out the the Arabic world. You know, they go to Nubic. You know, they can purify their language through Nubic. So. And this language on the right, uh, the Nuwabi, he called this the Rizk script. So 
this is mainly for the people coming out of Latin languages, Greek Latin languages, like English, Portuguese, uh, Spanish, German, French. You know, this is for us. This is what I help uh, facilitate us into the language what we supposed to be speaking. So these right here are just transitional languages. They're languages he put out, but they just transitional. So, you know. It's good to learn it. And it was good for me, too. It's good for me, honestly. It's, it's helping me to understand, well, overstand every other language on earth. I'm telling you, if you learn these languages right here, if you learn these languages right here, you're going to learn any other language is is a breeze. How do you think I'm making this video and, and know all this information? It's by way of these books, by way of Malachi York, by way of the Most High. Let's keep going. All right. And this is the language, um, the hieroglyphics, the the renewed hieroglyphic language. This is what he put out. And this is what we supposed to be speaking. But everybody, you know, couldn't get on board. So. It was transitional language, languages that had to be made. For example, this is proof of what I'm saying. I'm going to read from the top in New Wabic, our ancient Egyptian mystery language, we use the original hieroglyphic script. However, through our transition, we use the Nuwabic script Demotic, which is similar to the Arabic script called Nubic, and the Nuwabic Riz script, which is the Rizgian script. So look at the Nuwabic script Demotic. It's similar to Arabic because we it's a lot of us coming out of Arabic, you know. And some some people are try, uh, trying to un understand or overstand Arabic. So that's a good transitional language language. And then you got the red script for the people that speak these Latin, like English, Spanish. You know, if you want to get back into your real language, Nuwabic red script. So get into that. And then you'll 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 promote yourself or boost yourself up to Nuwabic script hieroglyphic because you I mean, you can learn it just outright. But. For the most, for the majority, you're going to need to go through those transitional languages to learn that. You don't want to just learn something hard right off the bat. So y'all can read the rest of that. that the rest of the um, page explain uh, um, the Rosetta Stone and how back then the Rosetta Stone is not pure. It's mixed with Greek hieroglyphics and Syriac. It's not pure. So yeah, you just pause the video and read that. All right, we at the end. I have to talk fast because this video already long. I didn't want it to be too long. So um, these are the books. These are the books. Y'all read these books because this is how I'm getting the information. This is how I'm upgrading myself. And I salute to, I'm grateful if, you know, if you made it this far in a video because it's much needed, you know. Um, so, yeah, you got El's Holy Torah, El's, Ho El's Holy Tehillim. You got the um, uh, holy tablets in the in the middle top, the middle top. Uh, you got the Nuwabic, the Egyptian language, mystery language. You got the first language on the bottom right, first language, and you got the teacher's guide. Now, this is what the majority of us should be, you know, speaking the teacher's guide. So we need to learn these languages, y'all, because if we learn these languages, we can't do nothing great if we don't learn these languages. Remember in the Bible. They came down and dispersed our tongue. We was doing something great. <laughs> they was doing something great. They was building the Tower of Babel, Babel. But because their tongue got confused, they couldn't build nothing no more. So I'm saying it to say we can't do nothing great if we're not speaking the same. So we got to speak the same. This video was to show you the first language and how it digressed all throughout time. And now we at a point well, we've been given an ascended language, <laughs> so we need to start speaking it. It only makes sense to, because we got to, it's not just to speak it, just to speak it. We, we trying to do great stuff here. So, and uh, I'm going to leave y'all with a key. I got one more slide. I'm going to leave y'all with a key to learning the language. I'm going to leave you with a key. You ready? And that key is... Um, these are verbs in the Nuwabic language. I ain't going to tell you, but this is a key. The proof is right here. I leave out with this. 
Aum.